from Mark 9, Mark 1, 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Let us pray together. Holy Spirit, open our hearts to receive your word. Reveal to us the good news. Enable us to trust in your promise of salvation. In Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Well, Lent is a time of journeying. It's our annual pilgrimage of following Jesus from his baptism, as we've just heard, to the cross. At the same time, we slow down and we reflect on our own lives as we examine our own hearts and complicity in the sins of the world. It's a time for spring cleaning our, our hearts. And as our Lenten devotional pointed out on Wednesday, a time to get ready for Jesus to enter as the special guest. With Lent beginning this year on Valentine's Day, I thought it was appropriate for us to think about the wilderness that we're invited to enter each Lent as a journey on the way of love. Red, of course, being the colour that we tend to use to represent love. As we wander along this way in the wilderness, let's go deeper with some reflections and wonder at the same time. Mark was pretty brief in his descriptions in our scripture. We don't get all the detail that all the other Gospels give us. So here today, in seven short verses, we have Jesus' baptism, his wilderness experience, and the start of Jesus' ministry. Mark tells us just four things about the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days. He was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. So we're going to have to use our imaginations and wander together. So imagine that you're going on a camping, backpacking trip alone to the high desert. Perhaps it's Arizona, New Mexico. What are you going to take with you? Are we going to have to sleep somewhere? So a backpack, a tent, sleeping bag, and pillow. You've got to eat, so maybe a stove and gas, pans and plates, utensils, food and water. About insect repellent and sunscreen, hat, maybe a change of clothes, soap, toothbrush, and a towel, a yeah, camping stool, and a fishing rod, a book, a pack of cards, pen and paper, maybe your electronic devices and a solar charger. <laughs> Now, can you really feel the weight of that box? Are you really going to carry all of that? Or are you going to discard some things? And what luxuries are you going to miss from home? Right, now you've got lots of time on your hands. Perhaps it's not so bad. No worrying about meeting deadlines. No children or grandchildren to look after. No long to-do lists. No computer or phone to keep checking. Or perhaps there is, did you take it with you? 
no companions to talk to. There's time to unwind. Plenty of time to exercise or sit still. Plenty of time to read if you bought that book. Or maybe it's your electronic device and you're hoping it doesn't run out of battery. What are you going to do with the silence? There's no nagging kids. There's no spouse. There's no boss. Will you hear the birds? The insects? The wind? The running water? What are you going to start to notice? What wild beasts are you going to have to live with or avoid? Snakes, spiders, mountain lions, ants, bears, mosquitoes? What voices have you been shutting out of your life that you're now going to hear? What thoughts have you outrun that are going to catch up with you? What's been causing you to veer from the path you believe to be good and right? What temptations are going to grab you? Is the voice you hear from God? Or is it the devil tempting you? How do you know if it's Satan's voice or an angel? What are you going to do when you encounter a wild beast? Are you going to stay? Or are you going to pack up? Where are you going to go? A wilderness is a hostile place where you'll experience trials and challenges. It's a place where you'll be tempted, whether to do something or to deny something. Perhaps your wilderness looks like a solo camping trip in the desert. Or it might be another physical place. Cities and towns could be wildernesses too. A place where many people live and congregate, and yet to some it can be the loneliest place on the planet. It's a place where opportunities abound, and yet some of those opportunities can be temptations. It can be dangerous too, with high crime rates. Or maybe your wilderness is some other physical space. Or maybe a spiritual place. A place that you choose to go. One where you might currently find yourself. It could be that you can choose to leave. Or maybe you have no choice but to stay. Where's your wilderness? Is it a physical place or a spiritual place? There's two types of wilderness experiences that I'd like us to ponder today. So a wilderness can be a place where you don't go willingly, a challenging place where you find yourself. Or it can be a place where you choose to go, and sometimes even the place where God sends you. So first, let's wonder about the wilderness in the times where we don't go willingly, but when we simply find ourselves wandering in the desert. In this case, the wilderness is a place where the future feels dangerous, and the path ahead is unknown. When all hope seems to have vanished and we feel alone, it's a place of fear. The Israelites spent 40 years in the desert. As a group, they were able to escape from Egypt, and I'm sure that they didn't know they were signing up for 40 years of wandering desert time. During their time in the desert, they showed allegiance to God, and they broke God's trust. They sought to provide for themselves instead of relying on God's promises. And they also learned how to be faithful to an unseen God. It was there that God made a renewed covenant with them, and it was the place where God delivered them. So the wilderness is a holy place in biblical times. In the wilderness, we become more aware of our dependence on God. We learn to trust God's way of being. We learn that we're connected to, we become connected to what God is doing in the world. And we learn the value of things when all else is taken away 
so that we can see the ultimate value of love. This week on Ash Wednesday saw us as a country unwillingly enter the wilderness together with the 17 deaths and yet another school shooting. We've been there before and nothing has changed. Perhaps this is the time to do that heart searching. What are we as a country being called to do? And what is your part in that? There's so much that I want to say on the topic of gun violence, the need for some sort of gun reform, the need for better access to affordable mental health services, help for bullies with anger issues, and identifying and having a way to assist the loners and those who are bullies before they explode. An article I was reading this week said violent crimes are committed by violent people, those who do not have the skills to manage their anger. The, the violence that is part of anger disorders is fueled by chronic rep repressed rage that has found no socially acceptable outlet. There are many an ma anger management skills that can be taught such as deliberate shifting from emotional to more objective thinking, deep breathing and other relaxation techniques, communication and listening skills, and identifying warning cues before anger boils over. As a culture, we've been unwilling to do anything. Perhaps we need these 40 days in the wilderness to wonder about the solutions and what each of us is called to do. Each of us can vote. We can write letters and make phone calls to lobby our representatives. We can all carry out difficult conversations with our neighbours. You know, I've been horrified locally on social media since Wednesday by the anger, the fear, the accusations, the divisiveness, the vitriol that's been expressed and held up by those that we, here, in this community, live, work and shop with. It's up to all of us to speak up. I also recommend reading this 48-page document and study put out by the Church and Society arm of the United Methodist Church. It reflects on gun violence and the teachings of the prophet Micah about beating swords into plowshares. I will post the link later. Can we learn to trust in God's way of being? Can we see that the welfare and engagement of all, regardless of our politics, is vital? Can we see that the way forward is following God's path of peace, the way of love? All of us, must take a close look at ourselves. How are we cultivating a culture of violence, hatred, anger, and fear? And how can we participate in building a counterculture where people can experience God's intended peace and life abundant for all? Now listen for a moment to the opening verses of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it's written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So Mark opens by telling us that this is the beginning of the good news. It's not the total story, it's an ongoing one. God is still in the process of making all things new. Mark then goes on to talk about John the Baptist as he refers back to the prophet Isaiah. This new story of Jesus is connected to what is foretold by the prophets and the ongoing story of God. It begins with John offering baptism 
with God's gracious act of forgiveness of sins. See, John offered baptism in the wilderness, in the desert, not in the temple. He offers it to all who come forward, not just those who can afford to offer the appropriate sacrifice. God was doing a new thing in the desert. God spoke a fresh word. So when we find ourselves in the desert, in the wilderness, let's remember to find the holy in the moment, to recognize that God's work is ongoing and not finished, to listen to God's word in the desert through the words of the prophets that still speak to us today. Prophets like Micah. And to remember that no desolation is so complete that God is not there with us, speaking fresh words to us. God is always present. Indeed, as we face the wild animals, God sends angels to wait on us. I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. So remember we were talking about two types of wilderness, the one where we don't choose to go and the one where we do. So let's think of it about the one where we choose to go, or perhaps it's where the Spirit sends you to prepare for something. In this case, the wilderness is a place of temptation, a place where we have to resist trouble. So what's been causing you to veer from the path you believe to be good and right? <laughs> yep, that one's an area I struggle with. Jesus was able to stand up to temptation, not because he was divine, not because he didn't use only, use only his own resources. He stood up there because there were angels there ministering to him. Angels could be divine with wings, but I don't believe that they usually are. Angels are those that God places in our lives to minister to us. We have angels in our lives who are our role models and inspire us. Angels who motivate us in some way by their actions or words. Angels who bring the gift of laughter and who offer comfort. Angels who share their own stories of temptation and how they came through. Angels who come alongside us and travel with us. Can you think who your angels are? <coughs> What should we do with Satan and the wild beasts? Theologian Karl Barth taught that the devil and demons are subjects we should not linger over for long. The very thing they're waiting for is for us to find them dreadfully interesting and give them our serious attention. So when we find ourselves tempted and troubled in the wilderness, let's remember to look for the angels that are all around us, that God sends to us and places in our lives. The good news is that those angels are there, even if the wilderness has Satan and the wild beasts. Lent is traditionally a 40-day journey of praying, fasting, and giving. You can choose what spiritual disciplines you take up or give up on your personal journey this year. We invite you, of course, to read and deeper, go deeper in Scripture and see that the way that Scripture is a living word in your life by reading the Gospel of Mark and using these reflections in our book, devotional book. And come and talk about it on Thursdays so that we can walk together and see what's stirring in our hearts. And so I invite you, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. <coughs> Almighty Creator, God of love, Lead us through the wilderness this Lent. As we wander on your path of love, show us, guide us, and remind us of your presence with us. Send us angels to walk alongside us and keep us safe from the dangers we will encounter. 
Enrich this time as we dig deep and do our soul work. Connect us to you and each other as we journey towards the cross. Amen. Amen.